Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again with the uh, Mercury News East Bay Times, Bay Area News Group here with Mike Lefkow. Uh, Mike, it's uh, early in the week, week 10, and we are out here at Liberty High and they're out there practicing right now. And uh, they got quite a game coming up on Friday night. Number two against number four. Number two, Liberty, undefeated, 8-0 uh, against fourth ranked Pittsburgh, uh, the perennial power out of the Bay Valley Athletic League uh, showdown coming up uh, at Pirate Stadium. Uh, game we've kind of been waiting for all season. What do we think? Or what do you think? I'll give my thoughts here in a sec. Well, I think it's going to be a really good football game. These are two teams that are, you know, when you come and watch these teams play, you notice a difference in the competitiveness and the level of play. Just a lot of talent out here. This should be a very good football team. Two very well coached teams. Uh, two teams that have a lot of future college talent. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a terrific football game, a close football game. Yeah, one of the things I'm curious to see is how uh, um, Liberty's offense uh, does against Pittsburgh's defense. I mean, we were just out at Pittsburgh. Obviously, they've got a lot of talent on defense. I've got to think that they're going to be itching to go at, at Pirates Stadium, uh, last home game of the season. Um, chance to maybe get a number two seed in the North Coast section open division playoffs and we all know how important that is uh, but for Liberty I mean to do what it's done all, all season to just roll through the competition including Antioch to beat Antioch the way it did to beat Freedom the way it did especially in, you know, in the second half with that score tied 21-21 and then to just pull away as it did uh, this game I mean it's the game of the year to this point Oh, it is. Um, one thing, though, make no mistake. I mean, this is going to be by far and away the toughest team Liberty has played this season. Mm -hmm. This will not be any tougher for Pittsburgh than having already played Gone on Centennial the road to Corona. Corona. Yeah, that, and that's um, one. And Galley made a point, right? He said that Victor Galley said that uh, they played well defensively against Centennial Corona, uh, intercepting three passes. Right. Um, that I mean. They can do something like that on Friday night. You got to think that uh, they'll be in pretty good shape. I think one thing that could be a problem for Pittsburgh is we were not a hundred percent sure who's going to start at quarterback. Right. It appears to be Willie Hart's, but we don't know for sure. And I think you've got to be able to throw the ball on Liberty. And, and are they going to be able to throw the ball on Liberty? That's a good question. <clears throat> uh, I guess we'll find out on Friday night. But yeah, the quarterback situation for Pittsburgh. Well. Uh, uh, Coach Galley made it sound as if it's a uh, luxury to have as many options at quarterback as he does. Uh, you still want one guy who's going to be comfortable back there under center in the biggest game of the year. Well, one of the things that made an impression on me, I saw, I covered the uh, Liberty Freedom game. And Freedom quarterback Joey Aguilar, he got injured in the third quarter, but while he was in the game, he was giving Liberty fits. He was uh, moving the ball, throwing very well. He had, I can't remember exactly how many yards he had. He got hurt in the third quarter. Now, Liberty had gone out in front 34-21 when he got hurt. Mm -hmm. But there was a definite difference in the game once he came out. Um, CalPreps.com is predicting a uh, Liberty victory by a touchdown. Does that sound about right? Um. I'm going to go out and pick Liberty to win this game. I think it's going to be a real tight game. I'm not even sure it'll be a touchdown. I, it could very well be like a couple of the games I saw earlier, that <clears throat> Clayton Valley Antioch game that was 35-34, or the Clayton Valley Pittsburgh game that was an overtime you game. You think they'll run away from Pittsburgh? Liberty? Yeah. No. 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 It's going to be nip and tuck. I, I mean, I, I think it will be. I don't know if it... Uh, I don't know if it'll be a high-scoring game or a low-scoring game. That's one thing I'm not sure about, but I don't Th think either team is going to win by a whole lot. 35-28 is what the prediction is for Cal Preps. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's a ballpark. Right. That's a ballpark prediction. Um, yeah, so obviously that's the game of the week. Uh, a couple other games in the South Bay. Uh, you got... Wilcox now up to number six in our poll, uh, ranked or uh, undefeated. They no, they will be going for the outright uh, Santa Clara Valley Athletic League De Anza Division Championship on um, Friday night at defending champion Milpitas. Uh, you've been you've made some bold calls in this division about some of these teams. 
Are you prepared to make another bold one uh, for Friday night? <laughs> you know, I, I I just don't have a feeling that no Pete's going to win this game. But that being said, I don't think this is going to be a route. I think Wilcox is going to have to play tough, solid football for four quarters. And I think they're going to be pressed. I do not think this is going to be a game where they go out and win 49-7 to or something like that. I think this could be a close game. Right. Um, I saw the projections earlier. They're not on my phone here. But I think uh, from what I saw earlier that Cal Preps was predicting a... Uh, oh, that's uh, the wrong date. No wonder. Uh, Cal Preps was predicting a big win for for, uh, for uh, Wilcox. I, mean, I, I disagree with that. You know... I want to say like four touchdowns. Uh, Wilcox, thirty-eight to seven. No, no. I, <laughs> I mean, mean that's going to be an insult for Milpitas. Well, how how well has Milpitas played lately? How did they, they beat Los Gatos? All right, but and I then mean, they hammered. Uh, Who did they hammer after that? Homestead. Okay. Well, I, you know I don't know. I I think that Milpitas is going to give them a tough time. Uh, right. Again, it's, it's at Milpitas. Um, isn't it? It's at Milpitas, right? It is. It's at like Milpitas. Gonna, if, if this is their last home game, it could be right, senior, senior night. night. I mean, there's a lot of things that could make it tough. Milpitas probably has a fair amount of talent, a good roster. I I don't think Cox runs away with this right. game. Uh, one of the games in the South Bay that is always circled on the calendar uh, every single season, uh, but unfortunately this season looks like an epic mismatch when St. Francis goes down to San Jose City College for the Holy War against Bellarmine. Bellarmine reeling, coming off a 14-0 loss to Sacred Heart Cathedral, the Bell's first loss to the Fighting Irish in 21 years. They will be at home to play um, St. Francis, which had a long losing streak. I believe it was 11 games against Bellarmine up until a couple years ago, and now I believe St. Uh, St. Francis is going for three in a row, and Cal Preps is predicting a... 42 to nothing St. Francis victory which to me sounds about well can St. Fr that sounds about it's right. It's going to be a test or, of uh, you know can Bellarmine at least gain some respectability this season and I, I don't think I mean it's, it's a proud program we all know that it's, I, it's the yeah, team I mean, has I, as I, much, much history more history than any team in the South. Hey right? look, look at it this way if, if they if, if if they win forty two to nothing, hats off to Cal Saint Preps Francis and, uh, and Cal Preps. Right. Right. But I'm going to say it's going to be a closer game. I think that St. Francis wins, but I, you know I'll go out on the limb and say twenty four seven. Another game out of the WCAL, uh, which will be right up the street from San Jose City College, will be uh, played at Archbishop Midi, where Midi, which normally plays its home games at Foothill College on Friday nights. Uh, Foothill College being used by, I believe, Los Altos and Gunn. Uh, so it will be at home on Friday afternoon. They have scheduled a 3.30 kickoff for Valley Christian, a team that Mitty traditionally plays tough, no matter the records. Cal Preps is predicting, I believe, a 34-7, to 7, I want to say. Yes, 34-7 to 7 Valley Christian victory. Now, Valley Christian coming off the emotional, right. unbelievable performance last week against Sarah. Do you predict a letdown for the uh, for the Warriors, or will they just keep it rolling? Mitty, on the other hand, coming off a stunning loss up, at, up in the city against St. Ignatius, 38-24 to 24 on Saturday afternoon. Well, I mean, if Valley Christian lets it go to their head, oh, you know, we're being taken out of our element, we're playing in the afternoon, we don't want to yada 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 yeah then I think it could be a tough game I think if Valley Christian just goes in there takes care of business. and takes care of business I don't know that they're going to go ahead and win by 30 points but I mean, a comfortable victory okay um, yeah you and I are both agree I mean Valley Christian to me that was one of the more impressive performances I've seen oh, sure. all season uh, they look great on both sides of the ball athletes uh, in the secondary I mean, watching that game, I just kept thinking, how in the world did they only score three points against St. Francis? And I was at that game. So. No, they, they played a perfect game. I mean, yeah. they, that was probably their best game of the season. Right. But the thing is, if they take care of business and aren't worried about the 3.30 start time and, and don't experience a letdown, I mean, come on, maybe lost to uh, St. Ignatius. They're struggling right now. Right. But like you say, maybe gives them trouble, and, and this could be a 
I, like I say, I, again, I, I'd be more comfortable with a 24-10 or 24-7 score. Uh, do you look for Sarah to bounce back on his home field in his one night game uh, per season? They bring in temporary lights. That will be the case on uh, on Friday night at uh, at the Brady Family Stadium. Uh, where they will be playing St. Ignatius, which obviously we just noted is coming off a huge win last week at home against Mitty. I think uh, Sarah wins that game fairly easily. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when I might pick a 38-7. <laughs> I think that uh, Sarah is probably going through a miserable, a miserable week right now. They're being reminded of what happened, and they're going to want, they're going to come out angry, and they're going to want to uh, get some. They can take care of business. Yes, yeah. Um, before we wrap this up, let's switch back to the East Bay. We got Las Lomas going for a 10-0 season. Their last regular season game is Friday night at Benicia, which they'll need to win to win a share of that league championship. Uh, you see Las Lomas. You see the Knights going uh, over to Benicia and taking care of business, which seems to be the theme in this uh, uh, video tonight. Taking care of business. Yeah, I think Las Lomas will take care of business again. I, I wouldn't predict a 42 nothing score though. Um, I've covered games at Benicia. That's a tough place to play. They've got a pretty good crowd. The team is pretty good. They'll have some speed. They have some athletes. Uh, I could see them giving Las Lomas a little bit of a tough time. And, you know, one of the problems with Las Lomas is they've played a weak schedule. Right. And uh, I think really since their game with Miramani, they haven't come up against a team that could uh, really challenge them. So this might be, you know, just not being familiar with playing a good team. Cal Preps is predicting <clears throat> a 35-21 Las Lomas victory. Does that sound about right? That's not a bad prediction, actually. Yeah. Um, De La Salle going to San Ramon Valley. Um, Coach Latticer's alma mater, correct? San Ramon Valley? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. I and, can't remember uh, if it was Monte Vista or San Ramon. Uh, San Ramon, I'm 99.9% yeah, like right, sure. But anyhow, <clears throat> uh, the Spartans will be uh, hitting the road and going to San Ramon Valley on Friday night where two years ago they narrowly escaped their first Bay Area loss in, since 1991, winning 28-27. to 27. We both do not see that type of game Friday <laughs> no. night. <laughs> You uh, might get 28 and 27, yes! Dale LaSalle 28 and 27 yes! and a half. So. Uh, Cal Press predicting a 48 to 6 win by the Spartans, and Cal Press also predicting Monta Vista take, take care of Foothill 40 to 7. That one I think is a little bit generous. I think, I think Monta Vista beats Foothill, but I think it'll be a little closer than that. Right. Uh, what other game <clears> were we <throat> covering? Was that about it? Those were the uh, games you were covering, right? That sounds like. I'm trying to think. I think that might be it. Out here in lovely Brentwood, uh, long drive out here. We see little kids coming, the future lions running all over the place, and the current lions out on the practice field. And we're going to get to talk to them here in a few minutes. Uh, we've already been to Pittsburgh. Uh, look for our coverage all week mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Sign up for the newsletter, it's free. We try to put as much good stuff in it. That will keep you coming back, and uh, hopefully you guys will be telling your friends to sign up for that newsletter. Anything else to add? Nope, I'm good. All right, that's a wrap.